Okay, hi everyone. Go so good to see you again. I'm going to give a couple of seconds to let everybody come in since I just started right now. Okay, so I hope everybody has been doing really well since I saw you last week. Again, just to introduce myself, my name is Lisa Sayetti and I work at the Heckscher Museum of Art located in Huntington. And welcome to our second installment of Heckscher at Home, the Kids Edition. So uh, most Tuesdays, I'll be coming on here to do a really fun art project with you guys while we're all staying at home. So each of these art projects are going to be based on a work of art from the museum's collection. So I'm gonna give a few more seconds. I see everybody's coming in. Oh, hello, Alyssa. Okay, hi, Christina. Hello, Jess. I see lots of people coming through now. Okay, awesome. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be using a work from the museum's collection as our inspiration for today's project. Now, like I talked to you guys last week, each of our projects are going to be based on using materials that everybody's gonna be having in their home. So before we get to creating, let's learn about what we're being inspired by today. Okay, so without further ado, I have brought along with me my handy dandy iPad like I always have. And so we're going to be seeing a picture of the actual work of art. So without further ado, three, two, one. Okay, so please let me know if anyone has any problem seeing the image. All right, so this is called or so this is created by Alexander Calder. So I'm actually gonna hold off telling you guys the title and I want us to talk about this a little bit. So when we're making our observations as we're looking at this, I want us to start from the top and then work our way to the bottom. Okay, hello William, hello Jess, I see lots of people strolling in. So as you guys are joining us, we're looking at this work of art and tell me some things that you guys notice. So if I were to tell you guys what I see, I see lots of different shapes. So when I'm talking about shapes, what shapes do you guys notice the most that are being repeated over and over again? Okay, so I see some people saying circles. Awesome. So we have all these circles, but at the ends of them, we have some things coming off, what look to be like strings, and they're floating up in the sky. What color is the background, guys? Okay, so I see some people saying that it looks white. So we have a plain white background, but it really makes the colors of those shapes really stick out. So we have blue, we have red, and we have yellow, and it's all against this white background. Do you guys think those circles remind you of anything that you might know in real life? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to scroll to see... Okay, so somebody mentioned we have those circle shapes and they look like balloons. Very good. And somebody even mentioned that the uh, shape that's all the way in the bottom reminds them of a boat. Awesome job. So we have what looks to be balloons. And if that's what you were thinking, you are correct. So the title of this piece by Alexander Calder is called Balloons. And so we have, remember those three colors that we're seeing here blue, red, and yellow. So I'm gonna be putting this down for a second and I'm gonna show you guys what project we're going to be doing after looking at this piece by Alexander Calder. Okay, so some of you guys might have already seen this since we did advertise it online, but if you haven't, let me share what I did. So again, three, two, one. Ta-da! So I'm gonna show you guys this first, which is what I did. And then I'm gonna again show you guys the work of art we're being inspired by. Okay, so the two things that they have in common are that we both have balloons. But what did I do different in mine than Mr. Calder did? Okay, so with mine, I added something extra on the bottom, whereas before there was nothing on the end of those balloons. What did I decide to draw here, guys? All right, very good. I made a fish and we have all of these beautiful rainbow colors at the top inside of our balloons. So again, we have this, which was the original, 
and then this is what I created. So we have a bunch of balloons here, as in we have a ton of them coming together to make a bundle. And if you guys look really close, can you see all of those circles? Can you guys see all of those geometric shapes? So when I say geometric shapes, that's another word we can describe shapes like circles, squares, rectangles. So we use the word geometric. If you guys haven't heard that word before, can you repeat it after me? Geometric. Okay, so that's one of our new words today if you haven't heard of it before. So we have our geometric shapes, our circles, and can you guys see every circle completely? Okay, so some of these circles are hidden behind the other balloons. So the word we would use for that when a shape is on top of another shape or one thing is over another slightly like this, we say that they're overlapping. So the reason why I decided to make some of my balloons overlap is to make them look a bit more realistic and show that some were more in front than the others. So I'm actually going to be teaching you guys today, if that's what you want to do, how we would be able to accomplish this. So we again, we have our bundle of balloons and on the bottom we have a very, very silly looking fish. Do you guys know of any movies that re might remind you of balloons and having something attached on the bottom? Hint, it's a Disney movie. Let's see if anyone can get it. Okay. All right. If you didn't guess, I'm going to tell you now. The movie is up. And if you guys have seen that movie, it's when the old man in the movie makes all of those balloons. And it almost acts like a hot air balloon. And it lifts the house up into the air. So I really liked that idea. And so I decided to add something on the bottom of my balloons to get it to lift up. So we can really see that my fish here is pretty panicked being pulled out of the water. Now, even though I decided to make a fish. Do you guys think that's what you're going to be doing? No. You could do whatever you want. If you'd like, you can do a house. You could do a different kind of animal. Or maybe you want to make something out of your imagination. You could add a dinosaur or a dolphin or a unicorn since we're talking about rainbows. The sky is the limit. You can create anything that you would like to do. So speaking of colors, remember I asked you guys to remember the colors red, blue, and yellow. And there's a reason why these three colors are pretty important. So they have a relationship. We call them primary colors. So primary basically means first. So to talk about colors and their relationships to each other, I brought a special tool for us to be using today. So it's called a color wheel. So some of you might be familiar with this, some of you might not be. So here is our handy dandy color wheel today. But if you guys notice, this is a color wheel. So what are we missing for this? What does our wheel need? Okay, so very good. We need some color. So I'm going to ask you guys to help me out. So we have six empty spaces all together. So we need to work together to fill these in. So remember, we started with our first colors or the primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. So we're going to add those first. Okay, so I'm going to take my red. Attach that first. Then let's take our blue, and we're going to add that one there, and then we're going to do our yellow. So while we're looking at our color wheel, did I put them all right next to each other, or what did I do? What did I leave in between them? Okay, so I left spaces, and somebody said this reminds them of pizza, and I definitely agree with you. It looks like a really fun rainbow pizza so far, but unfortunately, we can't eat it, but I might have pizza after this now that you put the idea in my head. Okay, so the reason why we have spaces missing here is because not only do we have primary or the first colors, but we are going to use them to get the colors that we're missing. So if you think about it, if we have red and yellow, and let's imagine if we had paint, if we were to mix red and yellow together, what color do you think that those would make? Okay, so they would make orange. So I'm going to take my orange slice and pop it on here. And am I going to put it here? Am I going to put it here? 
No. Since we decided that or red and yellow make orange, I'm going to add that slice right in between there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the last two colors. So now if we have red and blue and mix them together, it's going to be creating, I'll let you guys guess for a second. Okay, and very good. It is purple. So I'm again going to be adding that in between the blue and the red. And very lastly, if we mix blue and yellow together, we will get green. So I'm going to add that there. All right, guys, thanks to your help, I was able to finally color in all of the missing pieces onto my color wheel. So just to review, our primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And those are the colors that we need to make our secondary colors, which are orange, purple, and green. Awesome. So if we use all of these colors, they make up the colors of the rainbow, which is what we're going to be using to make our projects today. Now, I mentioned it's very simple and we're only going to be using materials that we can find in our house. So I'm going to bring back our project, which is this. So all I needed was one piece of paper, just a white regular piece of paper will do and any kind of coloring materials you guys have in your house. So it could be markers, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you would like. So I happen to use a mix of markers and colored pencils, but you are free to use whatever you have available to you. So the first thing that I had to do was I needed seven circles to start. So I, the reason why I needed seven is because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, the six colors in our color wheel. And the last one, which I decided to make the biggest, was the one where we were going to put all the colors to make the rainbow. So if you guys look closely, I actually made the rainbow circle or balloon the biggest. So I mentioned overlapping, and I'm going to show you guys how you can do that at home if that's the way you would like to make your balloons. So keep in mind, when you guys are doing it, remember that I left all my balloons on one part of the page. So here's the half point, and it's all the way to the top. The reason being is when we add our string on the bottom, we want to have room so that we can create something that's going to be attached to the bottom of our balloon bundle. So this could be fun for you guys to explore inside of your house and see what kind of circles you can find. Now remember, you can use all different size circles and make your balloons a bunch of different sizes, or you can keep them consistent and make them all the same size. So I'm going to show you guys some of the circles that I was able to find in my house, and I'm sure all of you guys will be able to as well. So one is just a regular old glass. Now you can use the wider part at the top or you can use the smaller one on the opposite end. I also happen to just have a drink at home and you could use your bottle cap or you could use again the bottom of your bottle for a bigger circle. And those are just a few of the ones that I found. You could use a roll of tape. Um, it'd just be really fun to walk around your house and see what you'd be able to find. Really, I could even use my earrings if I so wanted to. Now, you may think to yourself, well, Lisa, I don't really want to do tracing. I'm not great at it. Or I don't like it. That's not what I want to do. Have no fear. Because you can also freehand it instead of tracing it. So when I say freehanding, that means you're just doing your best to create a circle without using anything to trace onto your paper. So I'll actually show you guys a mix of what the difference can be between freehanding a circle and then using a stencil of something you find in your house to make a more perfect one. So again, I have a nice clean piece of paper that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to draw three circles first and show you guys what that would look like when they're overlapping. So for fun, I'm going to use my glass. All right, so I have three circles here, and if you notice, I have two of my circles that are going on top of that center one. So what I need to do now is decide 
do I want my middle circle to be on top of these two? Or do I want my two circles on the sides to look like they're on top or in front of this balloon or the circle in the middle? So let's say if I wanted the middle one to be on top or in front of these two over here. So what I need to do is erase the lines that are inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys what it looks like. So if you guys see, because I erased the ones in the middle, now it looks like this balloon is on top of those. Now that I've erased those lines, do these three circles remind you guys of anything? Maybe a character from Disney, perhaps? Okay, so for me, it really looks a lot like Mickey Mouse. But so now I'm going to do it the opposite way and show you guys what it would look like if these two circles on the sides were the ones that were in front of the balloon in the middle. If you guys see, I did it the opposite way. So then now it looks like this balloon on one side and the other one on the opposite side are both in front of that middle balloon. So that is how you would able to make overlapping shapes. Now you could do it with anything, but obviously we're making balloons for today's project. So that's what I decided to do. All right. So that's how we would make our balloons. But if we just have all seven of these circles, how do we make them look like balloons? What do we have to add or what are they missing? All right, so when you tie a balloon, you have that little piece that's left over on the bottom and then you have to add the strings. So for the bottoms of the balloon, all I added was a little triangle to show the end of it. And then I made uh, lines that all come down from their own balloon and they come together to a single point where something is gonna be on the ends that'll come from your own imagination. So remember what I said, you guys can decide whatever you wanna make on the bottom and don't feel like you also have to be making a fish. So next thing I want us to talk about is look at the background. I know when we looked at Alexander Calder and I'll bring him up one more time so we could see. I could find him again. Mm -hmm. Clearly, I have too many pictures on this iPad here. Ah, found him. Okay. So if we look again at the image of balloons by Alexander Calder, we can see that he has that white background. But what I decided to do is I decided to make a more fun background and I made it look like a sunset or a sunrise. So the sun is not high in the sky as if it was the middle of the day. So you guys can also think about if you were looking at your sky, what time of day is it? Is it nighttime? Are you gonna make it dark with lots of beautiful stars or the moon? Or are you gonna make it like mine where you have these really pretty pastel colors in the background to show that the sun is rising or setting? Or you can make it nighttime, like I mentioned. So it's up to you to decide what kind of background you want. Or maybe yours takes place in outer space and you can draw lots of different planets or the solar system. It is up to you. You don't have to make it look real or realistic. Okay, so remember, there's three different steps here. First, you have to make your seven balloons and you need to find circles in your house or do it freehand. And then once you have your seven circles, you have to add the little ends to your balloons and then make all the strings so they come down to a single point. And then you're going to be adding something on the bottom that you are going to be creating out of your imagination. 
Okay. So one more time, let's review our color wheel here. So remember we had our primary colors, red, orange, and yellow, and then we had our secondary colors. Oh, I'm sorry. We had primary, which is red, yellow, and blue, and then the secondary colors, purple, orange, and green, which all together make up our rainbow colors that we are working with for our current project. Okay, so I'm super excited to see what you guys create at the bottom of your balloon bunches. And please, if you do decide to create this project, we always love to see all of your creations. So please remember to upload a picture online and tag the Hexer Museum so we can see all of your amazing drawings that you will be creating. So remember, this is a series. So last week we had one where we started, and then today we were doing our beautiful, colorful balloon drawings. Drawings. and next week we'll be having another installment as well so don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms so you can keep up with our upcoming projects thank you so much for joining me please stay healthy please stay safe and I'll see you next week bye guys have a great day